Cavecast, the uncensored show for nerds of all kinds. You you are anything but a train wreck. You made life normal for me at, at a time when it was crucial. So. That was your Aunt Heidi. So, she gets all that credit. <laughs> What's it, I agree. Does. She definitely gets a lot of that credit. But in the same hand, like, that's just, I don't know, like, because, like, I mean, I knew shit was wrong. But, like, you just, like, you're like, no, we're going to watch the Green Mile. We're going to do this. We're going to enjoy this and, you know, eat pudding for dinner and you know, it was that that whole Hell deal. Yeah. yeah, it was so much fun. I needed that as much as you did. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah, those were scary times. <laughs> scary times, but you couldn't know it. No, it's well, and that's and that's the thing is that it just it set a bar for me that it's like now that I know that you know anytime that like tough things happen or things like that, I try to like do that where it's like no, I'm gonna go get a McRib because I care about myself. You know, right. it's just you know, so. <laughs> that's right. Damn it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Man, so it's actually, I'm curious, like, what was, uh, as far as like us staying at Aunt Heidi's, because I know, like, for to give context for people, is that that was essentially during a time when, you know, you and I were kind of like being thrown into a situation of like we were figuring out life and we were, you know, we were on our own, but not like completely on our own. We had, mm-hmm. you know, Aunt Heidi, but like, I know I have a lot of really good memories there, but like, with anything you want to share, like, or anything that's on your mind or stuff that you enjoy or remember, like, what was like one of your favorite things or multiple things you loved about being at Aunt Heidi's? God, the lack of drama, first of all. <laughs> Who needs that shit, man? I don't it, it was it was a foreign experience because it was something I never thought would happen. Right, right. So I was thrown by that. I felt guilty about it. I felt all of these negative things and I had to like I had to like do a complete 360 mm-hmm. with myself and make sure I was earning money and how you and, and that you were taken care of and mm. that you know you weren't eating pudding every night for dinner <laughs> it was only a couple of nights it in a row. was a yeah. few but damn it was good <laughs> Is that, well, didn't you mix it with the uh the marshmallow or something it was there um, was like something um, that you did to make it, wh- wh- really it was that yep yeah, whipped cream i always thought it was like marshmallow or something no, out of a no, can or like out of a ingredient i'm sorry to say it was just whipped cream <laughs> it, it worked it was <laughs> it incredible <does> and <laughs> it makes it go farther <laughs> so the wooden spoons really got in there. Yes, yeah, so we didn't even put it in bowls. We just had Hell the big no. mixing bowl, sat down on the floor, watched John Coffee get fried. It was amazing. Yeah, so you got it, time for that. Just this, sit down. Yeah, because okay. it was that and uh, Galaxy Quest. Galaxy the, those those were the two Quest. movies. Yeah, that was oh that was always gosh. like whenever it was on HBO because they had like the the fifteen channels that you could watch that played the same like forty movies like throughout the week or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. And Aunt yeah. Heidi had the movie channels, yeah. so we could. We could just watch whatever the hell we wanted, mm-hmm. and nobody cared. No, it, you know, I, I, Heidi has constantly been my normal space. Yeah, um, she's she's so grounded, <laughs> and um, even like the first week that I was there, mm-hmm. she said to me at one point, she says, she goes you know, you're sleeping like 14 hours a day. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, am I really? And she goes, she goes, I'm just, I'm just noticing. Right. And I'm like, well, why am I doing that? She goes, cause you're exhausted. Mm-hmm. And it, I just, I learned some things about myself in that time. I, you know, we had a lot to work out and we had, you know, I had to, I, I, I had to make a new normal. Right. And I didn't know what that was supposed to look like. So I just flew by the seat of my pants and just worked at Taco Bell for a few months. And that nearly drove me crazy. The only job I ever quit. Really? Oh, God. Those well, kids, I remember you crazy. at one point, uh, cause I think that I can't remember where we were, but it was kind of like the idea of like we were we were in a drive through. We were getting something, you know, coming home from like, you know, the store or something. And uh, I think that they made a mistake. And you were kind of like, no, it's fine. Just, you know, that this is what it was, you know, like, just take care of it. You're fine. And I remember you looked at me and you said, you will not, you'll notice that they always smile. Right. It's or, or they used to, you know, rather, but, um, but right. it was the idea of like, no matter what, don't stop smiling and just do whatever needs done. Just do what and needs done. And I have never worked a drive through before. I could not imagine it, but that's just, yeah. I don't know. It's like you, you got um, thrown into the deep end on that, you know, it's well, just nuts. You worked, you worked in retail yourself, which is just everybody should do it yeah. in, in some form, mm-hmm. just to appreciate those people that you think have this mundane, easy job. It sucks. Mm. And that was one of those times. I think I know we were at Wendy's and this young girl, she was passing our drinks 
through and 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 they fell. Oh God. They fell. And she would look, she had this horrified look on her face. And she goes, I'm so sorry. <sighs> and her manager was behind her. And I saw him leer over her and look. And he started to look at her. And I looked at him and I said, Don't you dare yell at her. Oh. I said, <laughs> I, I, I go, I'm, and he looked at me and he says, we'll take care of this right away, ma'am. And I go, that's right. I go, nothing is her fault. Mm -hmm. And I was just not having it. <laughs> yeah, no. And it's, well, I mean, it's especially too, like, like when uh, somebody's, you know, computer doesn't work when they're trying to run a card or, you know, it's, or like somebody right. has to like, you know, open up, you know, a new thing of change. Like I, I rarely ever, like, I, like if I have any kind of like, um, impatience, I keep it inside because it's like, no, this does suck. This is, you know, right. like this is taking longer. It's always whenever I'm in a hurry, you know, it's like something like I have to be somewhere or something, <laughs> but in the same hand is that no, like when you're on that other side where it's like, you already hate your life cause you're there, <laughs> you know, and it's, and then you make a mistake or something like that happens. Like, it's just, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's to me, I think that that's one of the things I've like, I've learned from you. And I mean, from, you know, definitely from dad as well too, that it was just like, no, just like, it's cool. Just, just, you know, it's, it'll yeah. get taken care of one way or another, even if it is 10 minutes, you know, longer than what you thought it was going to I, be. You I'm, know? I'm very glad that if that, if there's out of them among the things that I hope that I taught you that that's one of them to, to give people respect, no matter what they're doing, because yeah. they're doing their best. 90% mm -hmm. of the time they're yeah. doing their best, the, their best. And, um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's hard whether you're making change Hmm. Or you're trying to pump gas or working at a bank. Mm -hmm. it, it, if I worked at a bank. Oh, God. Could you imagine me working <laughs> I would, at a I bank? I would lose my mind. <laughs> I can't get the, I can't get the tube in the, in the thing that shoots up <laughs> and goes out. The futuristic, out. you know, sucker. Yeah, right. Yeah. Our bank is getting a complete overhaul. So it's like a war zone down there. And they put in, they put in new machines. And it works. I don't know. The thing just fits in there differently. And the girl was like, are you going to be OK? And I go, I'm trying to get this thing in here. I go, you know, I'm not an astronaut. <laughs> I go, so I, I, I'm trying my best here. And I'm like, this is so simple, Sherry. What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> so, you know, even on the other end, I'm failing. Yeah, was, was, I think it's just that moment of like, you get in, you get out, you go home and you forget it ever happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, I guess well, I kind of like when somebody looks at you like, enjoy your food. Yeah, you too. <laughs> oh. oh, right. See you later. Because um, <laughs> usually it's like yeah. I just walk away and I'm like, I'm not even going to explain myself. I'll just no, be that guy. No. You know, so just <laughs> let it ride. <laughs> right. Let it ride. But uh, no, actually, the, the main reason uh, I wanted to have you on was uh, we wanted to uh, give a chance for the audience to ask you questions. We've done a lot of different uh, question episodes, you know, with uh, whether it's music related or if it's life or anything else. And uh, it's always fun to see like what people on Discord or Facebook are asking because it's sometimes like stuff that maybe we've covered in a you know, previous podcast we had you on for one you know that we kind of like covered a lot of uh yeah a lot of ground of like what it was like growing up if you guys want to see the most embarrassing story that happened to me with the mud um <laughs> that's on there uh she talks about that but um no um i, I just i kind of wanted to wanted to give uh the audience some power and just be like you know it's like let's see like if what we can give you know mom some you know a chance to like you know stand up and be like all right this is you know the answer to these questions you know like you know kind of give you the spotlight a little bit um and i don't know it's it was interesting because a lot of them were like who's your favorite kid or like things like that i so, saw a lot <laughs> so, of that yeah, yeah. you know um true story this morning i woke up your brother and i'm like hey i'm gonna be gone today i've got to go answer questions that ten thousand strangers want to know something about me <laughs> and he's laying in the bed and he goes, he goes, you know, you can just lie. <laughs> he goes, he goes, he goes, you want to tell those people shit? You're right. <laughs> I, I'm like, well, I kind of do. Devin. And he goes, well, okay, do what you want, but you don't have to. <laughs> he's like, I can make this real easy for you right now. <laughs> okay. God, no, he's, uh, Devin is somebody that genuinely makes my day every time I talk to him. He is, <laughs> it's, we've actually talked about having him on for, uh, to kind of school us on D and D. Oh yeah, and uh, sure. um, he uh, no no promises, but I think we may have talked about this before. But he has said that he wants to uh, create characters for us, and apparently there's a way that you can do oh. something like on your phones or something, and you can like roll dice, and it's like randomized and different would, things like that. He would love that. Yeah, so it's just it's you know it's fun things like that. So, but we will see to be determined. But um, uh, let's see here. 
<laughs> well, I'm trying to figure out where I want to start. So, uh, no, who is your favorite kid? <laughs> well, it ain't you right now. <laughs> okay, you don't have to answer that. Uh, so <laughs> no, I'm going to answer that. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, I'm oh, going to answer uh, that. Okay, okay. All, for right, all, all right, the, cool, go for, for it. For all the inquiring minds that want to know. Um, I don't, I don't have a favorite. I have... I have special things in all of you. And I know mm. that probably sounds stupid and cliche, but, you know, Eric and I learned so much together. Yeah. And I will admit, he's kind of like my backbone kid. Yeah, because, well, I mean, to give context for anybody that doesn't know, you had him when you were younger. Yeah, I was yeah, 18. So, yeah. I wasn't even graduated yet. Mm -hmm. um, graduated, then had him in August. So, you know, that was not too much time to... Throw a crib in the, no, right. in the room. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's, it's, it's so, I think I told you earlier that, you know, all three of you kids being so different, you, you each give me something specific. You each give me something that I need from you. Mm. And I am so grateful for that. I don't have to guess anything with you. Well, Devin's a little hard, but... <laughs> <laughs> he's he's just he's he, he's our special boy. So he, he's, he's amazing. Devin's just too smart. <laughs> <laughs> he just makes us all look like idiots. But um, I think Dev, Devin's just ten steps ahead of us all the time. Yeah, I know he's but always been. Yeah, he is. Um, <laughs> but it's I am I am blessed and fortunate that I really can't say oh this one's my favorite this one but because you all just make me so happy in your own ways no oh. <laughs> and um I know that not every parent gets that mm. so you know I don't know if I've said this before but like some of the people in comments when I have reacted with you know you guys and they see what what it's like for us you know to be in the studio and mm -hmm. you know we get weird and goofy and whatever. And somebody says, I wish, I wish I could do that with my mom. Yeah. And I, I realized that I take that for granted. Mm. That's, that's my normal. Well, it's, I mean, even like times whenever, like I've, you know, um, been around friends or people or whatever. And like, you know, like when I was younger and I would go to their house and I would see the dynamic of like what they, you know, would deal with or like what they had, which is not all of it was negative, but it just like, I would come home and it was kind of like I would unclench <laughs> or I was kind of like, yes. okay, like I do like I have a very safe environment. Like things are good. Like I, I remember specifically one time uh, we were living uh, in the duplex, which is still, in my opinion, the best place I've ever lived in my life. But it was <laughs> a lot of like incredible things happened there. A lot of good there. things happened there. Yeah, because yeah. well, I didn't realize how much time had passed and how long we had actually been there until I moved. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, my God, like, you know, like my entire teenage life was here. Yeah. You know, it was, it was things like that. But Three years um, turned into 12 really quickly. Right. <laughs> and it's well, because uh, I remember uh, I, can't, I think it was either Tabitha or somebody it was one of one of our cousins uh, came over and she sat down on the couch and she just started looking around and she's like, this house is so cozy. This is so comfortable. And it's like, I'm like, and like, oh, again, like yeah. it's, it's that mentality that like, I remember that that's just how it's always been. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, whether it was, you know, before that time or after, <laughs> or even still to this day, like your house is always just so like comforting to be in. Like you have candles lit, you have very dim lighting, you know, it's, or you have like, you know, these, mm -hmm. you know, things that like really do make it feel like home. You know, and that's so like, that's what I got used to. So when I would go to somebody's house that maybe they weren't as well put together or maybe somebody was arguing or like, you know, there was, you know, tension all the time. Like, like our living environment was always solid. Like no matter what was going on, it was well, really incredible. I, I, I've never said this openly, like, you know, on, on this platform, but, mm -hmm. um, just in general, you know, my home life growing up was very stressful. Yeah. And, um, I think that, you know, I, I, I could have grown up and been a very different person. Right. Yeah. And I knew long time ago, even before I had Eric and, <laughs> you know, I, I was young having Eric and I could have like flipped out and not known what to do. And I think that by the grace of God, literally, I just embraced that mm -hmm. and I just loved him as much as I could. And I thought, you know what? My kids are never going to feel 
afraid to go home. Right. My kids, I don't, I didn't want you to feel any of those things. And to some people, I think it might have come across as maybe like I coddled you Mm -hmm. or whatever, but it was, it, I really wasn't trying to do that. Mm -hmm. I just wanted you to do, to know that I loved you unconditionally. Right. And that's my job. Hmm. That's my job. My job is to raise you, to teach you from right and wrong and, you know, you know, scream at you when I had to, but I didn't really have to (laughs) a whole lot. Um, it, I, I just wanted I just wanted peace Mm -hmm. and you know, the, the, the vibe in, in in our own house is as much for me Mm -hmm. and as it is for other people. But I, I have heard people say, Oh, it just feels so really good in here. And Mm -hmm. I don't, I I kind of shocks me, I guess (laughs) a little bit when people say that, but that's because I wanted that for you. Yeah. For all three of you. Yeah. It's, I mean, genuinely, because it was like, like no matter what we were doing, you were always interested. Like, you know, it wasn't like that kind of like, Oh, like, Oh, that's awesome. And then, you know, kind of mm-hmm. be on your way. It was like, cause one of my favorite memories of you is, um, uh, playing uncharted <laughs> in the <laughs> living room, you're crocheting, you're doing your thing. And, uh, I, I, it was like midnight, like, and it was a school night. I think I was like a sophomore or something in high school. And, uh, I went, Oh, okay. Well, you know, it's, it's time to go to bed, you know, cause that's something you've, you know, ingrained in me that it's like, no, like, you know, have your leisure or whatever, but you know, be responsible. Mm-hmm. Um, not so much nowadays that I'm an adult, but, um, <laughs> cause you know, <laughs> late nights on games are fun, but, um, no, um, I remember getting ready to uh, shut it off and you looked at me and you were like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> you are not going to leave me hanging yeah, here. I was like, what, what are you doing? Cause I didn't think you were engaged at all. Like, cause I, I there was like moments that like a cut scene would happen and Nathan would say, Oh crap. Or like, there would be like different things happening. Like you would laugh at it, but I didn't think that it was um, keeping you engaged. I love that, that much. guy. Yeah. And it was in the fact that you were like, you can't go to bed yet. I got to find out what happens. <laughs> and I was just like, Oh my God. Like uh, it's, it's it was right. always so fun. Like, cause it's not even just with that. Like even, you know, when, uh, like you and like my biological dad or like, you know, like whenever you guys would like, we would get movies every weekend or like that, like dad had like the theater system and mm-hmm. like, you know, we, like we enjoyed things. Correct. And it was, it was just, that's, and what's awesome is that as time progressed and things changed that, that just, that element just never went away. And it's, Mm-mm. it's something that's really awesome. You know, that's just, that's, it's just nothing yeah, but fond your, memories. Your dad was really actually very good and fun about, you know, I think we, we both, we both w- wanted that as well. And you know, making a separate place to watch movies as opposed to the living room. Mm-hmm. You know, he was all about wiring for surround sound. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing down here? <laughs> and then when he was done, I'm like, oh, shit, this is awesome. Yeah, right. <laughs> and um, that taught me a lot about just just technical things as, as, as simple as sound, how it can make a movie so much better. Right. And... Um, so yeah, you know, it, you know, it's a movie. You're supposed to be having fun. <laughs> yeah, I Eat think junk and <laughs> you know, stay up too late. Hell yeah. Well, it's even. Uh, I remember. Um, I, I wasn't. It, it wasn't at um, our place, but it was at somebody else's place that had a similar theater system. And I remember us watching Twister. And when they were going through mm-hmm. the cornfield and hearing the corn being hit against the oh. car and stuff, you know, and then like the base parts are hitting in whenever you know, like either it's the music or you know the. Um, right. uh, the tornadoes ripping through a house or something like it was just like, Oh God, like this is a whole new level. It's, it's why I got a theater system because I'm like, once you've had it, it's That's really right. hard to let it go. It is. It's so it is. good. Yeah. It's, um, now it's kind of a staple. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but back then it was like, Oh my gosh. Well it's, well, it's kind of like the idea of like making content now where it's like, it's aggressively easier to make videos sure. now than it was like 10 years ago or whatever, you know, it's yeah. cause uh, you can get a good theater system for a decent price and, <laughs> you know, do your thing. It's not going to break the, break the bank too much, you know, yeah. compared you to you don't have to get be. everything at Radio Shack. Now. Yeah, no, <laughs> and it's some right? kid making commission, just trying to pay his bills. <laughs> um, All those people were so unhappy. Um, actually, th- this is a good question and uh, it's not something that you have to like have a final answer on, but I am kind of curious as to where you are with it. Um, the Bad Omen, which is Kayla, uh, she wants to know where's the crochet channel, mom. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so uh, or just even like because you because you've kind of talked about like you know maybe embracing doing your own stuff one day or trying something. So mm-hmm. like, kind of like where's your mind with that right now? Well, I tried a little TikTok first to see how I 
do with the camera and mm. myself, and this isn't very good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, not, I, I've enjoyed them. <laughs> I I just kind of. I didn't know if I had to be very definite on what I wanted to land on because, you know, like you guys do like reactions. Sure. Okay. And so you have like a form thing, form (laughs) of what, of of what you're doing. And, um, I think I told you that when, you know, on, when I was on Rager's live Yeah. and when he said, he said, enjoy your evening, mom, just do Riker road mom, uh, stuff. (laughs) And I'm like, that's a good name for a channel, Riker road mom stuff. Mm-hmm. And I really wasn't sure if I wanted to use the full Riker Road name. I think it's uh, kind of like not to be like kitchen talking it, but I think almost like if you did like Riker Mom stuff, like it kind of like it kind of rolls off the tongue really yeah. well. But it also yeah. gives you that junk drawer that it's like you can put anything on there. Yeah. You know? And yeah. and um, mostly um, as far as like crochet stuff goes, I have to kind of learn how to do it. Mm. I have to have a good setup because I've tried a couple of things and I've bought a couple of like, you know, things for my camera that has a light on it and yeah. and so forth. But I don't know how to edit a video. I know you can speed <laughs> speed things up and mm. whatnot, but it's mostly that I need to learn how to like use my camera, uh, right. you know, um, the right way. And um, um, Kayla, if you're watching this, I will send you uh, the the handbag a picture of the crochet handbag that you wanted to see. You'll fall in love with it. But <laughs> anyway, um, I really would like to do that. But when I mean, th- that way, if I just keep it general, whatever I feel like doing that day is just what you're going to see. <laughs> so, you know, I might clean the sunroom and I might make a meatloaf or I might um, d- d- show you what's in my makeup bag. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's some stuff in there. Hmm. You know, the 80s called and want half of it back. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so, you know, I pulled I pulled something out the other day and I'm like, oh, my God, there's my blue trashy m- mascara. <laughs> they make blue mascara? Oh, honey, they make purple mascara. I always thought that you just yeah. needed your you lashes to be black. You have to get this close to my face to see <laughs> that it's a blue. Somebody goes, oh, hey, and you sexy thing. You were in Blue mascara. Here, I always thought it was just like my la- my lashes are black. Done. Move Done. on. Lisa. Yeah. yeah. Besides the times you stab yourself in the eye too and everything. So. Well, yeah. well, and and eyeliner is totally out of my realm. When a guy can put on eyeliner better than I can, <laughs> you just gotta let that shit go. So. <laughs> There are some guys that do it really, really well, and they're usually always in a band, you know. So they it's, are. Yeah, it's that type Have of you thing. seen Young Blood? He looks fantastic. <laughs> well, it's even like a, in Rockstar, where the guy looks at him, he's like, "What's wrong? Did you get hurt? I'm in a band." Yeah. You yeah. Know? Like, Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I put toner in your copier. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah what, what did he say? He's like, he's like, we don't slam a, it or st- or stick a pen in you it. You want to quit sticking a pen in there, please? <laughs> yeah. If you guys have not seen Rockstar, do oh, yourself a you favor. You are missing so is, much. If you love music, or and especially if you love '80s like hair metal music. It will be right up your alley. So oh, it's, I think it might actually be one of the best movies but that Mark Wahlberg has done besides Shooter. I, I agree. Yeah. It's, I just, agree. it's just a solid movie. Uh, yeah. Now i got to go watch that. And if anybody <laughs> has not heard Kyle sing the ending song to that movie. Oh. <laughs> oh, he learned that. I think he learned it from me. Because, <laughs> and when uh, he would do a session at the winery he played it last oh yeah that was my closer yeah. i loved it it's so it's he's so good <laughs> that was one of those that like i remember uh because i would always do that and then end with um uh sweet apple acres where it's just, it's just a song about apples it's just a song about but it, apples. but it grooves and it's so damn good it's so much fun so. hey you know <laughs> but then again everybody's so drunk they don't care where they're just like he's cares. just playing music that's so, right yeah. i've had 16 glasses of wine <laughs> <laughs> um okay um I know what comes to my mind here, um, but I am curious about uh, Devin and Eric. WizKid wants to know, what's the strangest thing you've caught your boys doing? (laughs) If you had to guess, like anything that comes to your mind. I know the one thing you caught me doing, which was a big misunderstanding, (laughs) genuinely. But I'm very curious to see if anything (sighs) sticks out in your mind at all. (laughs) 
because it's either like we were sub- not supposed to be doing it or like, you know, uh, or it's like, oh, like, like, what the hell are you like? Why, why is this happening? Or like th- these things don't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, with Eric, there's probably a whole freaking list. <laughs> So, um, I, I don't want to say I caught Eric smoking, but I knew he smoked Mm -hmm. and I just asked him for one. I go, Hey, you got a cigarette? And he goes, I don't smoke. I go, yeah, you do. (laughs) Just give me one of them bad boys. And he was kind of like, Oh. Okay. <laughs> Mostly with Eric, I caught him. I caught him with music he wasn't supposed to listen to. Oh you know? God! And yeah. now he makes a living listening to all that stuff that yeah. I was supposed to be protecting him <laughs> from because I was a good Christian mom. <laughs> What's well, I mean? Even like we talked about on the previous podcast, where it's like if if I would have had or he, especially if he would have had uh, Tom McDonald as a poster on his wall, you like you would have had that knee jerk reaction of a mom at that well, time yeah. being like, "Get that off that wall. Who is yeah. that?" You I know. Was, I was busy. I was busy just (laughs) trying to focus. And, you know, and plus, you know, we were surrounded by other parents who were raising all these other kids in the same time, too. So all this music came along and it was so aggressive, though. Yeah. I mean, you know, in that defense, it was aggressive. And I mean, what were we supposed to do? Mm -hmm. You know, I just wanted you to grow up to be gentlemen. (laughs) So, um, gosh, Devin. (laughs) <laughs> oh, Devin's a whole Devin's a whole podcast <laughs> He's a whole po- <laughs> Um, You know what actually <laughs> Um, You catch Devin in the kitchen Oh when he's making something When he's making something and I'll come in And I'll just stand there and he'll stop and he'll look at me And he'll go ain't nothing to see here <laughs> I'm like what the Are you going to eat that <laughs> Um, yeah, I made it. He's this. obsessed with the air fryer. He put something in the air fryer that was an epic fail. Oh, he no. Goes, yeah, I, I cannot remember what it was. He he tried something between him and your dad, and they're constantly running that air fryer, which in our small house is right behind our living room. So, you know, when I'm watching the Golden Girls and the air fryer comes on, I'm like, God damn it. And I'm turning it up because I can't hear. <laughs> and, um, oh, I'll be really. What did you do? Oh God! It was besides um, paint the house with mud. So (laughs) no, um, I painted the steps with something. Maybe that wasn't the best way to start. (laughs) Um, Do tell. Okay, hold on. Let me explain. So uh, no, um, (gasps) you do. Are you? Do you remember? (laughs) Do you remember? Yeah, that was like the worst, like, this is not what it looks like moment whatsoever. Cause I was, I felt so embarrassed. Cause I was like, cause at first I was mad that I made the mess that I made. <laughs> yeah. What was it? So w- what ended up happening was that, um, I got home from work and my, uh, routine at that point was <laughs> make something to eat, go downstairs, be at my standing desk <laughs> And, you know, edit and learn how to do stuff. And all I remember was that (laughs) it was that I (laughs) I ended up um, making pizza rolls because I was like, I was like, oh, hell yes. Pizza rolls. This is the perfect like snack hour or like a dinner after, you know, working in a hot warehouse all day. Like I'll, you know, recover. But. (laughs) Pizza rolls are only as good as the ranch dressing that you dip them in. <laughs> so I had the plate. Mm-hmm. I'm walking down <laughs> and I go down the steps and oh I tripped. <laughs> <laughs> and pizza rolls went everywhere. everywhere. And the ranch dressing <laughs> fell in such a way <laughs> that it was wisps of like all over the it steps. It was. Oh, <laughs> And my, my, my first thought was, oh, my God, mom is going to be home any minute. I just destroyed the steps. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, I mean, maybe I can run upstairs and get paper towels and, and like get this taken care of. And I remember I got to the top. I heard the car door and I went, no. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like getting as many paper towels as I can. I'm wiping it up. It's smearing. It's just, it's just it was a, it was wrapped. It man. just kept getting worse. And you heard me. You're like, oh, are you home? And I'm like, yeah. And And you opened the basement door 
and we locked eyes. <laughs> you you were down there. God, no, this is like so funny. You looked down and you had this in your hand, and you looked up at me like, <laughs> like, like, like a like like you were seven. <laughs> You know, I didn't even inherently do anything wrong. No. I just, I dropped my dinner. Like I know. Say. I remember that I felt bad because you were freaking out about it so bad. That's what, what killed me was the fact that you looked at me. You looked at the ranch dressing, looked back up at me and went, really, Kyle, the stairs. <laughs> and, I, and it took a second for it to hit me <laughs> as to what you meant. And I just went. Oh, come on. I was like, no, that's not what was happening. No. I swear to Christ, that's not what was I, happening. Like, it just, oh. If you can't mess with your kids, who can you mess with, man? <laughs> that just, uh, that, but I mean, it's, I, eventually, like, I explained myself. And I was like, no, I'm like, I can explain everything. This is exactly well, what happened. The, the pizza rolls helped. <laughs> right, they, helped your cause. <laughs> Could you imagine if I just walked down the steps with just a cup of ranch dressing and spilled that? So like, <laughs> oh, God. Oh God. God. Okay. Yeah, that was no, that was seriously one of the times I like I've been afraid before when I've done something wrong. <laughs> Cause I was just always that soft kid where oh, it's yeah. like, oh, oh no, I did this wrong. It's like, no, that's fine. Like, like I actually thought that I wasn't allowed to watch the Adams family <laughs> when I was like super young. Cause it like was dark and moody and scary. And like, well, I didn't tell you that. No, what's it was just all my <laughs> assumption. And I was like doing the whole clicks thing, and you were like, Oh, are you are doing like the Adams family? I'm like, you know what that is? Oh, yeah. I'm a Cool. <laughs> like, I want to watch it. It's well, it we're not cool. summoning Satan. We're, <laughs> we're just watching the Adams family. Oh my God. Okay. So, <laughs> um, okay, let's see here. Let's try to find a good one. Uh let's see. Oh, okay. Um Kellyanne wants to know uh who was your favorite band growing up and who is it now? So if it, like no matter wow. like like what it could be like I I can bet that you probably have had multiple favorite bands mm -hmm. when you were younger, but like maybe there was just a big one that just took over. That was like, that kind of like never went away when you were younger. Well, when I was very young, like middle school, listen, I'm, you know, the Bay city rollers came along. Oh, oh my God. I almost and, forgot about them. Yeah. And you know, that was, that was big. That was, different. They were cool. And I had just pictures of them all over my basement. Mm -hmm. Um, but as I got older and you know, if, if you're not from Ohio, you are not going to know who the Michael Stanley band is, mm -hmm. but you know, Michael Stanley was from Cleveland and just, they just made damn good music mm -hmm. and been to countless, um, you know, uh, concerts, you know, with friends and so forth. And um, my, you, your dad refused, <laughs> refused to believe that they, that they held, they still hold the attendance record at Blossom mm. Music Center, uh, surpassing Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin? Yeah. That's, um, wow. Okay. That's what he said. Oh, no, no, no. He had the oh, look on his face. Yeah, he goes, yeah. ah, and I go, okay, why don't you just Google it? Well, it's, Metalhead. I, well, I think because, that it, like it, well, it is believable because of the mm -hmm. fact that it's like if they're you know from Ohio, right? Then you know, obviously, all the fans are going to show up and they want to um, you know want to experience that. Well, you know, they just didn't get the the national notoriety that that they should have, and to hear later years to later to find out that did I speak that right? <laughs> um, <laughs> that they were coming on the scene the same time as um, Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. Oh, sure. Yeah. So they were kind of almost the same kind of band mm -hmm. but do you, you know springsteen they were all from jersey mm. so you had you had a a, a circus of people in this band right. that was doing stuff and He's you the know boss. And, and and michael stanley you know they were all from cleveland youngstown wherever and these were just good guys that wanted to make music and where was the fun in that mm. there was not a, there, there wasn't there was no drama. There was no story. Nobody had a record. Nobody had like, no, I mean, a police record. There was nothing. Right. There was nothing to, to mm. um, I don't want to say promote, but they were less promotable. Sure. But as far as that goes, I would have to say, hmm, I, I would have to go with like probably Bon Jovi. 
Okay. Journey. I was actually about to ask you if Journey was was a, a top tier one bon for you. Bon Jovi would could could be actually could be a little hit or miss for me, hmm. but um, you know, they were just pretty to look at. <laughs> When a guy has better hair than you, you know, <laughs> then the other guy's putting on better eyeliner than you. You just feel terrible about yourself. I'm but seeing a consistent theme here. Aren't yeah. you though? Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, but Journey and Queen, hmm. you can't argue with either one of those. Yeah. And I know, I think that you know, if anybody else doesn't know that Freddie Mercury is on record when saying when somebody said, how does it feel? to be the greatest singer in rock and roll history. And he says, I don't know. Why don't you ask Steve Perry? Oh man. That's, that's just, it's, that's his that's honest, the right answer. That's, that's his the right honest, answer. Yeah. Yeah. That's how he felt about him. And I, you know, I'm like, you know what, that, that was kind of one of my first in like little uh, insights into what other artists, how they see others mm -hmm. in their, in their craft. Right. And that was so honest. Yeah. about him yeah so as, as far as like uh as far as now like what, what do you find yourself like kind of gravitating towards like has it changed much or is there anything new that's kind of taken over i have i have my 80s moments my playlist is like a bipolar psychotic <laughs> patient <laughs> and i i need that i need that in my life but you know i i gotta say falling in reverse is really hmm. just kicking my ass yeah. <laughs> i it, it isn't just because they have a great sound and they do. And quite frankly, the more I learn about this man, mm -hmm. the more I just love mm -hmm. him. I have moments where I'm like, I think I raised him. <laughs> I am. I, I, it's very, he's, he's just um, learning more of his personality. The rock feed uh, interview with oh, him. That, that was incredible. Is yeah. So, so good. Yeah. And, you know, but it's not just it's not just Ronnie Radke. His band just floors me. Yeah. He gets a vision and they just go, whatever you want to do. And they remind me of Queen. And I will say until the day I die, they are the queen of this generation mm -hmm. because they don't do the same thing twice. No, and it's well, especially even like like when you were talking about like, you know, um uh, in the uh reaction for um you know, uh, oh God, what was it? The Papa Roach song. It was uh, oh. Last Resort. I don't know why that left me. But uh, when you were talking about it, when you're like, no, Freddie Mercury would be proud. You know, Freddie Mercury yeah. would be loving that. Mm -hmm. And he would be, he'd be a fan. Mm -hmm. He'd absolutely be a fan. And I don't know if, if um, Ronnie Radke will ever hear me say that. <laughs> um, and I mean, it doesn't matter, but it, at the same time, I would just hope sometime he knows that. Well, it's, because I think, it's yeah. true. I'm, I'm pushing 60. And if somebody my age can't tell him, <laughs> if I say it, it's true. I yeah. don't, I don't, I don't shit around about that. Well, it's, I mean, cause even like, again, like my main thing of understanding who they are, which I, I understand that it's a Hollywooded thing, but Bohemian Rhapsody where like, you know, they're mm -hmm. in the studio and they're like, no, we need to be experimental. We need to try things, yes. you know? And it's like, that's, you know, the perfectionism that was there of like doing all the Galileos and like, like all those different things where it was like, yeah, like, no, they, they, I mean, it's funny in hindsight, but it's like, right. you no, know, like, like they, there was that mentality where it's like, no, they, like there were people that didn't get what Freddie was doing no and like, or what any of them were doing. And it's no. like, it was just, they were just all Titans that just had like, I wouldn't say they had no business being that good, but it's like, they were just four dudes that love to make music. They had and, no business being that good. Right. <laughs> you know, um, and, and I, I have um, a deep respect for not just the, the way that they worked together without questioning, mm -hmm. you know, well, what do you want this to sound like? Mm -hmm. Well, let's do something different. And the fact <laughs> that poor John Deacon just wanted to be married and... <laughs> <laughs> have a family and he had this, you know, I mean, I mean, if, if you watch the movie and I know they highlight, you know, certain things and probably had to change things up a little bit, but you know, when they're all stranded on the side of the road, you saw who was changing the tire. Right. Yeah. Okay. And you know, mm. just those kinds of things, you know, he was like their workhorse a little bit in that regard. Mm. And I think he was, I think he had to be like the parent. Oh, sure. Yeah. At times. Yeah. And, and he really just, 
that that wasn't his plan. Mm-hmm. That wasn't his plan. And I know this is going to sound very weird, but um, I know that that you know that a friend of mine, an acquaintance of mine, she's as sweet as she can be, is uh, taking me with her to see Lover Boy this summer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And she has very big connections with them. They treat her very well. Like they treat her like family and they're really good people. And I love what I've learned about them as people, but they have uh, a keyboard player Mm. that is classically trained. Mm. And I'm thinking to myself, this guy could do these concerts with his eyes closed with (laughs) one hand tied behind his back. (laughs) And I feel like, um, his name is Doug Johnson, something like that. Anyway, he just kind of stands up there and minds his own business and plays. And he does all these cool like sound effects and things. I'm like, are you, you just the John Deacon of <laughs> Loverboy, aren't you? Because <laughs> you didn't play it on this. Yeah. He's so, I don't want to say he's better than that, but he's so much, there's so much more to him sure. than that. And I love learning that about people, Yeah. about, about you know, um, musicians and, you know, and different things. Mm -hmm. Um, fascinates me. What's, I mean, that's honestly, that's what I do anytime that if I find a new band, I need to look up interviews. I have to know what, like what the singer's voice really sounds like. Mm -hmm. Um, it's that, you know, fascination. Cause like as a kid, you know, like you watch, you know, uh, Def Leppard's music videos and like how high his voice is. And then when you hear him, he's like, Oh yeah, you know, we were just talking about, you know, like, and it's like, well, like what, like that voice (laughs) comes out of this man. Like it's impressive. It's, It's really cool. Like, I mean, because like even when I when I found Slipknot, like that was around the time that they did uh, their DVD. I, I believe it was called Voliminal Inside the Nine, where it was they had interviews with each member unmasked mm-hmm. for like the first time that cool. was like kind of put out there. And uh, um, Craig, who's the quiet one, the guy with the really big spikes out of his head. Um, <laughs> it's always he, the quiet. One, yeah, isn't uh, it? he he doesn't talk. He's just in his backyard smoking a cigarette and they're like, okay, so, you know, Craig, what's, what's it like being on the road with Slipknot? And he just hits his cigarette and he's out of focus. Like, okay, how many people are buried in your backyard? <laughs> one of these, we're going to get one. Yeah, of these. <laughs> and then I think the last thing they asked him was, what's your favorite kind of cheese? It was like 90 seconds while like Corey's is like 15 and Joey's is 12 and Paul's is 20, like all this stuff. It's like, no, all right, move right along. Craig doesn't talk, you know? So, but oh, it's, Craig. There's- it's, it's cool just because like you get to learn about them as people, mm-hmm. you know, and it's where it's like, you know, like it adds that humanity, especially for a band like that, that is just so insane on stage age you know and like their music is so intense and like you know they've written about very aggressive things and it's like when you just get to see where they are now and it's like oh no like they're they're dads like they're they're grown up you know they're getting old now like you know it's it's just it's really cool you know yeah i i i have learned uh thanks to you and your brother and Riker road um because i've learned to stop and pay attention to those people that do use those gimmicks, uh, masks or whatever Mm -hmm. on stage and really listen to them because, you know, they're doing, they're doing that for a reason. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like Kiss did their thing and blew up doing what, you know, they were doing. I'm not a huge Kiss fan. Mm, Same. And however, they opened up a lot of doors for music. Mm -hmm. And I think that for the most part, I, uh, I might catch a lot of flack for this, but I think for the most part, Kiss's music is very simple. It is. There's yeah. not a lot to it, but they made it look good. Yeah. Um, with the mystery of who they were, with their with their stage show. I mean, it's 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 really very brilliant. Yeah. You know, when somebody says the best the 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 best band in the land kiss well yeah. gene simmons wrote that yeah right <laughs> because you are know, you allowed to be your own hype yeah, man? yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. and yeah. but you know what though you got to give him credit because if you if if you think it then mm. you are well it's especially to too, a lot of people you're gonna be well because even um like learning more about gene simmons and like how much of a businessman he mm. was and like it and still is like it's that mentality of like you know, when Ace was dealing with his stuff where he was like, no, nah, dude, get clean or get out, mm-hmm. you know, where it was like he just he was very much like, no, you need to perform. You need to know your parts. You need to you need to co-write. You need to do this like it's, right. you know, everybody was kind of like hands on deck, you know, and even getting to see like it, it's not recent because I think that they're like officially retired now. I don't know if they're 
like God, technically ever so. done, but, <laughs> but, uh, um, it's taken 40 years. Yeah, It's like, like they're going to do a comeback tour like 20 times or something, but, um, but no, uh, I, they like whenever, whenever they were done with shows, it was always, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to catch flack for this too. Cause I can't remember the gentleman's name. He's their newest drummer at the time, but, uh, it was always Gene and, uh, the drummer, would be in a separate van and then Paul and then their guitarist would be in another band or another van because it was that mentality of like, no, like I'm the one who can handle him after a show. Like Paul needs to calm down that kind of a thing. Are you thinking you of know? Eric Carr? No, no, it was, it was well after Eric Carr. He, okay. had, he had already passed away. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'll go on record saying this. Hmm. Eric Carr was the best thing that ever happened to that band. Yes. Yeah. Especially if like, I love it loud. Like in like just um, that, that's oh, he it's so was good. just an animal and loved it. It was all, it was written all over him hmm. and I hate what happened to him. That's what, I can't remember what happened to him. He what, had, what, can't, he got cancer. Oh, so he was sick. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And tried to, and tried to come back. Mm. you know, in the middle of it and just couldn't do it. Yeah. It's a very sad story, but well, it's, he's, yeah. He's, yeah. he was amazing. Well, it's even like, uh, uh, you know, the drummer for Def Leppard too, like him losing an arm and still like, I mean, he was able to overcome oh, like you know, something just, you know, impossible. Like, cause is, wasn't he the one that developed like the electric drum kit? Like, like there was like the tech was like made for I him. I want to say yes. in in a, in, in a way, it's I like, think correct that, us if we're wrong, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, I think that a lot, a lot came from that because he had to, he had to replace an arm. <laughs> yeah. And, um, that story is, is just so unbelievable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, you know, Def Leppard, Def Leppard is a big one for me as well. Mm-hmm. They just make damn good music. Yeah. <laughs> just it's, damn good. That's, I mean, that's probably the most like, like, honestly, like that's the one thing, like being in the car with you when I was younger, like, you know, just, you know, like, like the majority of the hits I think that we listened to were Def Leppard songs. A lot. Like, cause mm -hmm. it was always just like, you know, cause I, I talked about it on the Moose Launch podcast, but like, uh, I'd be in my car seat, the, the radio would turn on and I would just hear, do you want to get right? <laughs> just like, you know, at that time it was too loud for me, you know, and you were fine. Stuff. He was right. fine. <laughs> so, he was absolutely um, fine. But, uh, but no, it's, it's just like, that was, that was always the vibe, you know, it was, mm -hmm. um, you know, being introduced to eighties music, you know, in the way that I was, was that it was never the, all right, Kyle, I hope you like this. It was like, no, this is good. Throw it on. Hell yeah. You know, cause it, it was, there, there was never any, um, uh, there was never like, any like pleading you had to do to get me to like the music that you and dad did, because it was just like, no, dad was into Metallica. He yeah. loved journey just as much as you. And then, you know, as you know, uh, you know, Mike dad, like, you know, just how when he came, when he came into the situation, he's a big kiss fan. He loved Metallica as well right. too. Like right. he was, I, I, I don't want to misquote him, but I think he, uh, I remember him, sitting uh on the computer in his bedroom and i think he had just gotten metallica saint anger and he was just like rocking to it you know just doing his oh, thing oh yeah 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 he, yeah. he, yeah, he hmm. um it, he's he grew up being more of a metalhead than i did right and um so as he gets older and i get older mm -hmm. we both are kind of going backwards <laughs> a little bit where like he's mellow, like, mellow he's, out, like yeah. he's like you know what ambrosia is really good and i'm like have you heard this band they're called slipknot dude you know and um <laughs> you're going harder into the pain and he's like I'm, pulling I out of it yeah. like, but but your dad's kind of like i mean he he just kind of likes what he likes yeah you know, I get, I get bored. He, he, he just, he has a comfort zone and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's well, I mean, cause even Eric's talked about it many times where he's like, I have my 15 songs I cycle through, Right. you know? <laughs> um, I mean, to be fair, even on like my playlist, like the majority of it is just sleep token. Like that's just, that's like the main mm -hmm. thing I'm listening to now. And, um, it's just, it's, it, it scratches an itch that I've not had from anybody else. And it does, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily yeah. better or whatever, but it's like, no, like when I want to feel a certain way or when I need this, like I listen to Sleep Token, you know? I, so, yeah. I think for you that bands like Sleep Token, Polyphia, those kinds of things, and while I enjoy them, mm -hmm. they don't really land on my playlist and it doesn't mean I don't like them. Right. It's just not like, I. if you say, what's your favorite Sleep Token song? I don't know. Right. <laughs> I don't know what they are. I know that I like, if Sleep Token comes on, I'll listen to it. Mm -hmm. But I think your creative uh, music creativeness craves what they give you. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause it's, I, I think that it's, um, 
not to go too much into it because we're going to do a couple more questions and we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. But uh, well, that's to say, like in the next you know twenty minutes to three hours or whatever. But uh, so, hey. um, but uh, no, um, it's just it, there's something interesting about like the way that Vessel writes his music because he really doesn't like curse at all. And, no, and it's because uh, and, and, there's two songs for sure that he cusses in, which is God's, which is super heavy. And mm-hmm. then uh, there's a song called Nazareth that um, the line of it that he says, which I, we still don't know who she is, who, who she is or we if we were he's just even, watching that, weren't we? Yeah, because it would like the um, uh, the line is uh, let's see if she can guess what a hollow point does to a naked body. Let's fuck her up. Yeah. And it's like w- w- this is completely out of character, like and like. I like dark stuff only because of the fact that like the, the person that created it, I'm more interested in. Correct. You know, like it's uh, uh, kind of like the whole like Marilyn Manson mentality where it's like, I've never really enjoyed his music that much. Like, I think that he has like really, or more so John five when he was a part of it and like his guitars, you know, throughout it. Um, He has like aggressive, just pissed off guitar tone, which I really love. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's kind of like that mentality of like, no, like, I want to know why he hates God. I want to know why he or like or whether he still feels that way now or whatever, or if he ever did. But like it's, you know, from his music, it's very clear that at least that persona does. Right. And and it's like that idea where it's like I didn't really shy away from that. I binged a lot of his music videos when I was younger, you know, sneaking it, you know, being like, I want (laughs) to I want to understand, correct. you know, what's going on here. So it's just Sleep Token is just that that beautiful thing of that, like it is really a Russian doll where it's like the more that you pull off these layers there, it just, it just doesn't stop. It never ends. Yeah, it does. It truly never ends. And I, and I, again, um, that fascinates me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I would, I like you, I was just telling you in Mm -hmm. fact that, um, if I could just have an hour and talk to Kim Dracula. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's, he's like a train wreck. I can't take my eyes off of him. (laughs) His music, my God, he had a big band playing Hmm. behind him. And then he was shooting up somebody in a, in a, well, we're wearing a wedding dress. I mean, like, you know, this is like the stuff that goes through my head. And yet I've heard him speak and I'm like, I, I, I want to know what makes a person like that tick. Yeah. You know, like where did you come up with this? Did you have a fever dream or did you like, you know, has this always been with you? Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, Alice Cooper back in the day, he gave such a dark impression of himself mm-hmm. uh, with the things he did on stage. And, you know, he had all that, you know, guillotines and stuff like that, that he would do. And, but it was, um, I learned later on when when you listen to him speak now. I mean, he's a very godly man. Yeah, and he's wicked smart. He's very smart. Yeah, yeah. and and um, it was it was like theater for him. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like you know, instead of going to Broadway, just buy one of my tickets. You can come and see, like a <laughs> you know, kind of thing. And I and I, I of course didn't understand that back mm-hmm. then. I I you know I I wasn't raised in, in that kind of environment and um. But I'm glad that as I've gotten older, that more bands have kind of brought their craft to the to the stage. Yeah. And don't judge a book by its cover. No. Um, because you're going to miss them. Yeah. You're going to miss something really good. That's <laughs> that's and honestly, I think that that's, you know, kind of just goes back to the whole like, you know, being raised by you and, you know, just the environment was that it's like we like whenever I would bring a friend over or especially if Eric would bring a friend over because he was older. So like, you know, he was interacting with maybe more like diverse people than what I was. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you never once judged anybody. It was never like, you know, Oh, like you're wearing weird clothes. Get out of my house. It was always just like, Hey, like, do do you want a cup of water? Like sit down, like whatever, like the the bathroom's over here. Kitchen's over there. I'm not helping you. Like, you know, it's like that type of deal. Like it's just, that's, and it's, and it's resonated. Cause like, even like, you know, like when I've like watched like videos where like somebody is is communicating something very, very important, but they have like a speech impediment or something and they don't speak clearly or it's difficult for them to say certain words like that's the point. That's the point that people will like jump on that and just make fun of them for it. Right. You know, where it's like, no, like this, this is a very smart young man over here. That's, that's talking, listen to what he has to say. Like, it's like you, like you always gave us that kind of clarity, like no matter who we interacted with. Of that, it's like look at the person underneath. Yeah. yeah. Well, you you have to. 
um, because those people um, are probably not getting that from somebody else. No, right, 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 yeah. And people deserve to be heard, you know. I can decide later if you're an asshole. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Or I don't want you in my house, you know, like for, I mean, but <clears throat> it's, um, you know, even if you are an asshole, who cares? Right. <laughs> Still going to love you anyway. I can be a real <laughs> bitch. <laughs> What's a, like Eric always said was that mom is a God-fearing woman, but she will stab you with a rusty spoon. <laughs> I have no rusty utensils in my house. <laughs> I just want people to know that. <laughs> well, uh, that seems like it's pretty wild if you would. But um, funnily enough, uh, Lola actually has a question. Uh, she wants to know, um, oh. again, you, you don't have to share it if you don't want to, or if nothing comes to your mind, we can move on. But because uh, it is kind of a loaded question in a way. But um, uh, what is mom's wildest story that she's comfortable enough to share? So like either something that either happened or something you did or just something wild that happened to you that, that you Hell got to experience. Lola. <laughs> I can see her. She's going to watch this and she's going to just stand and laugh. <laughs> Wildest. Okay, listen. <laughs> Remember, it's on the internet forever. So. There are a few. Oh, hell, I've skedaddled way past that by now. So, you know, we're out there. Um, Jeez. <laughs> Wow. Some of them, boy, God, some of them are really bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. This one, you know. Okay. But they might not know. God, am I going to tell this or not? Um, well, thank God for your Aunt Heidi. First of all, <laughs> she's, she is the saving grace of us. She, she's been, she's the best of us. She's, <laughs> she is. <laughs> she's better than all of us. Um, yeah, she's been my voice of reason most of my life. Mm. She's an old soul and she's so, she's just so damn cool. And mm. um, we were in high school when John Mellencamp was John Cougar. Oh, okay. Um, for whatever reason, they just decided that they didn't like his last name. So they, they, they named him John Cougar. This is who you are now. And after a couple of years, he says, fuck you. My name's John <laughs> Mellencamp. But anyway, we went to a concert hmm. and it was really good. And he was just a little hottie <laughs> and he was very outspoken. He really like he wanted those people. He wanted us getting our money's worth. Mm -hmm. And it was just such a good show. And where we went to see him was Blossom. Mm. And that was the time that when the show was over and we were in the pavilion, you ha you can have lawn seats or you can have pavilion seats. Are these people like over here? Should I be looking? Yeah, anyway, you're right there. Yeah, you're fine. Doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> and um, so I was, for whatever reason, I said, Heidi, I want to meet him. Oh. I want to touch him. <laughs> oh, I want to see him. I want to touch him. I want to meet him. And she's, you know, and of course, people are streaming out of here and there's one way to behind the stage. Mm -hmm. Blossom is a very sophisticated, beautiful place built for the Cleveland Orchestra. Yeah, it, it is awesome. It is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's insanely gorgeous. And um, they don't, there really is no backstage anything mm -hmm. back then um, or, or as far as I know now. And so... I went over and I wanted to see like how bad the security guard were people walking back. There were people doing whatever. Do I, did I need a pass? Did I, and there was no such thing. And so I remembered, you know, I realized that. And so she's like, she's over here going, you know, what? we got to be traffic. Right. You know, <laughs> being the most practical person there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh -huh. this big guy in a security shirt was standing there very forbidding with his arms folded and, you know, looking and I just blurted out. I said, which one of you guys do I got to sleep with oh, to get backstage? <laughs> and I shit you not, this guy stepped out just with from behind him out of nowhere. And he goes, that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy standing there with his big arms folded he just kind of grinned and he looked at me and i turned around and she grabbed my arm and she says we are leaving <laughs> and i said give me eight minutes <laughs> 
<laughs> that's, well, an, that's an oddly specific amount of time. It is. <laughs> it's true. Eight minutes is plenty of time and then some. And I'm like, come on. I, she drug me out of there. And I tell people that Heidi is the reason I have three kids and not six. Oh, God. Probably. God bless her. Uh, it'd be a very so, different dynamic now. So. Yeah. Yeah. I was about, was I 16? So you were 16 years was probably, old. Okay, judge away. Oh, the, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I know. I'm just, I never had that. Con I always figured that, like, I was 20. Uh, yeah. Like, no, you're like, you're just, I like, was a tramp back then. Oh, fuck. So, <laughs> according <sighs> to Eric, <laughs> we'll give him that one. Well, it's the only thing that I will say was that uh, he did, I think it was to, to Moose and Jeff, where he was just like, Yeah, he's like, I told mom to stop, stop having a kid every decade. So, like, <laughs> Listen, you know what? <laughs> Fuck you, Eric. I'm um, always telling him to far out. <laughs> um, so uh, to kind of kind of wrap things up here, um, this is uh, this is a really good question. And it's actually asked by Haley. Now, guys, just so you know, we we will have mom on again. So if you guys want to ask, you know, different questions and things like that, um, there were a lot of repeats. Some of them joke mm -hmm. ones of like, who's your favorite kid? Things like that. So it was, you know, okay. just different things. So but uh, we will try to make sure we do it again. That way you guys can ask some more, you know, maybe specific questions or different, you know, kind of theme stuff. But um, I really like this question. We were talking about this in the car before uh, we got here. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Haley wants to know what's one piece of advice that's always stuck with you throughout your entire life. So something that like, you know, just, you know, to this day, it's something you stand by. Well, you know, I saw your grandma before I came here mm. and I told her, I said, this is what I get to do today with Kyle. <laughs> and I was reading her some of the questions and that was one of them. Mm. And I said, you know, mom, I said, you have a lot to do with a lot of these things. Yeah. So Riker Road grandma, she's pretty, pretty cool grandma. She is one of the most gangster people that's lived yes. on, or has yeah. that's living on this earth and have, yeah. that, that will be, you know, that, that has lived on this earth. Everything. I think it's she's just, running uh, that place from her bed. But yeah. anyway. <laughs> so she, she was a captain um, of, in, of industry. So, yeah. <laughs> she always said to me, have your own wheels and mm. have plan B. Oh, Wow. Pretty simple. That's okay. Wow. Pretty simple. And you know what? I can still use that to this day. Mm -hmm. You can use that always. Actually, it's have plan B and have your wheels. Mm -hmm. And if you so choose, have an overnight bag packed in the trunk. <laughs> that comes in handy too. That's my <laughs> that's my ingredient that was added to it. What's well, what what I think is great is just to, to like build up grandma here is that you know that's like her, like her house on Red Rock, you know, just like, like living over there. It was just, it was, you know, from my perspective of being younger, that it was this big house. There was, you know, mm -hmm. so much to do. There were so like, cause there was so much, you know, so many rooms and things and so much to do because, you know, she, you know, wasn't it that it was for uh, Aunt Dora or was it, I, can't, I can't remember who was staying with her. So she, oh. she had rooms specific for some people that either like that weren't doing well or that like people that yeah. live with her, she things took like in, that. So. She took in, um, her aunt Dora and her and and my grandma when they were both not well, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sisters. Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't it wasn't planned for that. She just she just had extra bedrooms because mm -hmm. you never knew who was going to come and stay. Right. Because there was, you know, a bar downstairs. <laughs> yeah. And we even had the uh, really big uh, room that was just nothing but cement that we could have like all of our like, you know, riding toys and things like that that we got to mess around with. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even like when uh, Eric brought over his uh, PlayStation one and we put it on that really old ancient TV that she <laughs> had downstairs. Like, it's just like, it's, that was like that, that was a safe haven for us. And sure. She, I remember like just growing up with her and how just matter of fact she was like, I'm, you know, sitting at a, uh, uh, restaurant with her and, you know, the cousins and, you know, Eric and everybody. And I was like, you know, like kicking my feet and doing this or whatever. And I hit her knee twice <laughs> and she looked at me and she's like, you need to stop kicking me. <laughs> and I went. Yep. And I put my, she went, she's like, there I you go. I sure do. And she was like, all right. She's like, do you want French fries? Here you go. So it was that type of thing. Like she was, she was, she like just always had this like mentality of like being very practical. Mm -hmm. And it was just like the, just the wisdom she had about things and just how she like, just like went about it. It was, it was, just, it was really, really cool. Like that was awesome just to grow up in. It was just, it was really wild. Well, you know, she, she wanted, she wanted, especially, you know, with me having Eric when I, when I was so young, 
she was freaking out about it so badly. And then that kid was born and then it was like, give me that baby, you know, kind of thing. And she enjoyed being that grandma so much that she didn't plan on, Mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of like, I'm not raising this kid. And I bet, well, I, I did not ask you to, you know, right? but boy, she just loved that role. Mm -hmm. And each of you, each of you boys got the best of her Mm -hmm. in your, in, in your young ages. Devin didn't quite, he, he did, he didn't get as much of that because she was older, you know? Well, it was very much like when he was uh, like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was like from toddler to like maybe like 10 years old yeah. like when he really yeah. like was around her a lot. And yeah, by things. then she had a condo and, yeah, <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. But, you know, you can still go to grandma's, fall asleep on the couch because you ate three pudding cups. And, <laughs> you know, oh, did you eat the pudding yeah, too? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah right. I kind of yeah. like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, she... Um, you know, she just meant business when she said it, she meant it, mm-hmm. you know, that's, um, she's the one that really taught me unconditional love Yeah, and that you can have a good time. I listen, I started having those good times way before, <laughs> <laughs> way before, you know, having a, having Eric at 18 was a problem. What's well, like, and uh, <laughs> you know yeah mm-hmm. what's well, I think that like what I loved was uh um I won't go too much into it you'll you'll know why but like you know the uh the fact that uh the gentleman that she was with at the time that they just went and crashed a house party where it was <laughs> like they just they, they like she's like we're, what are we doing here he's like oh we're gonna go to this party she's like do you know these people no I don't know them and he's like no and, and they and they just had the best time ever like that's and it's, it's it's so weird to think about now. But it it's is. like that's just how it was. Can yeah. you imagine? You'd be on Nancy Grace yeah, right. <laughs> today. You'd be all over the news. That was actually my dad. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, back then, um, you know, my dad was w- w- was a different person, mm-hmm. you know, obviously, but my dad didn't knew how to knew how to have fun. Mm-hmm. And she said, not only did we crash this party, the husband thought I invited us. <laughs> and the wife thought that, you know, that that he had, had invited them and they had a house full of people. It was in a, in a beautiful neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And she says that that party was was absolutely like. I don't want to say DED. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before they got there, right? They got there, and in th- and in thirty minutes, they had them singing <laughs> and around the piano, around the, the piano, yeah, yeah. and and she said, <laughs> she says, I came home with a door prize, and I didn't even take one, like in a gift <laughs> exchange. <laughs> and for for uh, years, she had these little. Uh, they were there. You, you put them on taper candles, mm-hmm. and they were candle huggers. So and it was it was a Santa Claus and a Mrs. Claus or an elf or I something. Remember that. Do you remember those? Yeah. That's where those came from. Oh my get out of oh. Yeah. Oh. So vintage. <laughs> and she had them for she had them for years and years. Wow. And so yeah, that's that's um that's how you have fun. That's it's just she just I don't know, because it it always tripped me out because, you know, again, like the grandma that I, you know, grew up with and everything was that, you know. She would take me to movies. I think actually the the first movie I ever saw with her was Toy Story. Mm-hmm. And I remember like just being like looking at this, you know, huge just screen and being like, oh, what is this? Like, <laughs> I'm with grandma. This is awesome. You know, it just like it was always a great time with her. And like even as like time changed and stuff where it was just like, no, let's go to the huddle house. Let's go get some sweet potato fries. Let's just hang out and just do our thing. Right. And, um, kind of I would say like kind of like wrap it up was uh, um, one of uh, my favorite things that she ever said. And it's really where I, where I understood the person that she is, is that, um, she, you know, ran her own business made, you know, countless amounts of money was able to raise her family, do her thing. I think that she was active in the city and like had won awards and like, you know, just was, you know, somebody right. that was very important. And I don't remember how she arrived at it, but I think that she said that she was sitting in her living room and, she was looking at all these awards and like all the things, the memorabilia that she had around her of like, wow, I've done a great job. And she had this moment. She's like, I felt, you know, God tucking at me, you know, tucking at my heart being like, you've done all this for yourself. What have you done for me? Oh yeah. And she's like, that was the moment that she's like, I made a lot of changes. And, you know, so I I don't know what all those things were, like how it went down, but like, just to know that like, she was just in this place of that, like, 
she 100% took care of herself in a situation that she kind of like similar to like you were, it was like she was thrown into something Mm -hmm. and had to figure it out as she went and she fucking nailed it. She just like, she just, she did just incredible things. And especially at that time, like, you know, like, I'm, no, I don't mean it this way, but it's like at that time, it's like that, you know, being a woman owning your own company. Correct. Like, it's like that was just unheard of. Like, I, I would say in this area or just in general, where it's like, dude, she just surpassed everything. It, it, when I really think about it and, you know, in her situation and, you know, just, I mean, that was my normal mm-hmm. seeing my mom have a business and I worked for her and I learned a lot of different um, things that I could do, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, within the office and working in shipping and, you know, dealing with UPS and then typesetting and then talking to customers on the phone and you grow into that. And she never changed uh, how she, how she handled herself. Mm -hmm. And she just inadvertently, I think, taught me how to just be a survivor. Yeah. Yeah. And just in that regard, it's, it, you know, you don't have to crawl out of a slimy pit to be a survivor, Mm -hmm. but, you know, by the time Eric was two years old, I was a single mom. Mm -hmm. So I had to just, I had to make that happen. And she said, one day I was renting an apartment and one day she said, okay, it's time to buy a house. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. And she goes, it's all right, we'll do it. (laughs) And she, she showed me how to do that. And how, you know, what a mortgage was and all of these, you know, all of these things. And um, back there, it was far more simple back then. Sure. But it, she, she just taught me that creating a stable life and um, a home and your, your, your day to day thing, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, Eric knew what to expect when he woke up in the morning and when I picked him up from daycare and when I, you know, when he was off for the summer and all of these things. And, you know, Friday nights, we went and spent the night with Heidi and that was our fun time and, mm-hmm. you know, on and on and on. And, and by the time you were born and, you know, my life was far more stable then, right. but it came, it, it still stuck with me. And then when all that changed years later and I had to do it again, Mm -hmm. it wasn't so hard. Right. It wasn't so hard, but I got to admit, you know, um, through all of that, my one, my one constant was always Heidi. Yeah. Heidi was always there. Hmm. And, um, from the time Eric was born, she was in the room when Eric was born. Didn't she help deliver him? She pretty much. Yeah. Um, by the way, she's a nurse guy. She's yeah, a so, nurse. Yeah, so just, just, just so we're clear. So yeah, I yeah. was freaking out because I was in labor and I didn't know what to do with this. And she looked at me and she says, quit screaming and start pushing. God, she is such a she's gangster. She's a savage. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay. Like, oh my God. And so, but, um, you know, Heidi just takes it on no matter what it is. And when, you know, you know, things were, were, were ending with your dad Mm -hmm. and I kind of really had to find some place to go. And she goes, no, you don't, you just come here. Yeah. And she just, you know, to think about it. Mm -hmm. So, um, grandma has, grandma has just, uh, it's been a good uh, visual for me Yeah, in a sense. Mm-hmm. You know, could be a little dramatic here and there, <laughs> <laughs> hey, babe, but, who isn't? Yeah. but who isn't, yeah. um, you know, you learn a lot and yeah. I, I, I have a, a lot to thank her for. I, you know, barbershop music and, hmm. and, um, a girl, girl weekends. <laughs> I was having, I was having gr- gr- girl nights and didn't know it Yeah, with my mom. <laughs> you know, the video store and too much pizza and, yeah. you know what, oh, the, the Hardy boys are on TV tonight. Let's right. watch this. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. you know, that was, that was our comfort zone. Hmm. And so I think that's probably where the comfy, cozy house kind of environment. Oh, 100%. Made me, yeah. uh, cause we, we, we changed a lot mm-hmm. Yeah, we had to change a lot when it was just her and I, we just did whatever the hell we wanted. Right. And I'm like, 
I don't like this wallpaper. <laughs> then take it down. Take it's it like, down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll just make a thing like about that. it. Yeah. It's just like, cause that's, I don't know. It's to me, it's one of those that like, you know, from growing up and just like everything that has happened will happen that it's like, you know, we were, we were always in a very amazing environment. Family that was around us was always great, mm -hmm. you know, and, but it's like, she's definitely like, you know, it's cause again, like I've been blessed with many grandparents, you know, and it's like, I, I could do an right. entire podcast on both grandma Shirley's and grandpa Jerry and right. you know, everybody. But it's like with this specific situation, it's just like, no, like that's like, Grandma Dora is just like, just, she's an elite amongst like just everybody. Like she just, she did some really incredible things and it's just really, really awesome. I, yeah, yeah. I, I can only hope to be half what she's been. Trust me, you're platinum. You're and, good. <laughs> and in her lifetime, you know, she's accomplished a lot. Mm -hmm. And, um, in, uh, in, in, in what you were saying, you know, your family, you know, your dad's family, mm -hmm. um, you know, Riker Road dad's family mm -hmm. and even Eric's dad's family. Mm -hmm. um, d d I've, d we've had, we've been surrounded by wonderful people Yeah, that I dearly love to this day. I don't care who they are. Right. And um, because they've, they've meant everything to me <laughs> and to my kids. So <laughs> yeah, we've been blessed. We've We're been blessed very much. Really have. Mm hmm but guys, this has been our uh, questions episode with mom. So if you guys have any more questions that you want to see asked in the future or, or sorry, answered in the future, we will definitely do that. Make sure you comment them below. Um, this has been good. It's been fun. Yeah. Just, you know, kind of just like a chill laid back. We did it without headphones tonight. We're trying we something did. new. I so. feel a little naughty. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sitting on the uncovered couch, you know, <laughs> on the, everybody loves Raymond. It's, uh, I feel kind of naughty. <laughs> this is why you put plastic on us. So. <laughs> but uh, definitely, guys, if you guys want to see mom on again, definitely let us know. Um, but this has been just a lot of fun. Um, it's just, it's always cool to kind of uh, open up the curtain a little bit and kind of, you know, mm -hmm. show people, you know, the, the full spectrum of things, you know, cause it's always something to discover. Like it's, it's old for us, but it's all brand new for them, you know? And it's, it's just, oh. it's always so cool. You know, everybody knows who you are. And, and, and I mean, I don't, I only show up every once in a while. If, or if, if Kyle would put out a damn chair for me, that would be swell. <laughs> and I could listen to the music. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to hear that one. I'm not going to hear that one. But you get the joy of listening to it on your own. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, but it I is. I envy that Do so much. Do you know what it all sounds like with those headphones on in there? Dude, that it, shit's awesome. It is pretty cool. But yeah. Um, but, um, I lost my train of thought. Hmm. There it goes. It's gone. Did you see it? It's out the door. In proper, proper fashion. Wow. <laughs> As Luke and I always say, oh, oh. It's, gro it's growing wings. Oh, no, you got it back? You got it I back? Do. Yeah. I got it back. No, what I, was, what I was saying is that everybody knows who you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a handful of people I interact with when there's lives or, you know, a Facebook page or whatever, which is a Facebook group is totally cool. Hmm. Come guys, and join us. If, if you guys have not joined it yet, you need to. Totally yeah. cool. Riker Rhodes Roadies hmm. on Facebook. I'll approve you. Just join. I'll, <laughs> I'll let you know. And, uh, Don't cause any crap. <laughs> but, you know, when like we do things like this and I sit down and, you know, and I know you're going to ask me questions or people want to know something. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, you know, I know what people think of you. I'm not quite sure what people think of me. <laughs> you're, you're just, you're their as, mom. <laughs> as, you know, like as just as as your mom. Mm -hmm. And I know the, a lot of time the thought goes through people's heads to like, okay, who's responsible for these two yahoos <laughs> over here? And what did I do? Well, yeah. now, you know, Yeah, <laughs> and, um, it's, it's kind of, um, it, it's refreshing to me to see how well you interact with your, with, with your audience, mm -hmm. with your fans they're fans, they're family, we're family. <laughs> but, you know, I know there's some people that just maybe don't have anybody else mm -hmm. and we want them to feel like family. Absolutely. So, you know, um, you know, I went on, oh, Jinx, Jinx, uh, her name is Jinx. She has a oh, okay. YouTube channel, right? Yeah. And I just happened to see she had a live. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I wanted to see her. I wanted to like see what, and I clicked on her and I'm like, oh God, she's adorable. <laughs> like just everybody else I see. <laughs> and um, so I mentioned something, I was at work and I mentioned something. I was like, hey, you know, and she said, she says, oh my gosh, it's Riker Road mom. I feel like there's a celebrity here. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, God bless your little heart. And I'm like, I'm just a mom cleaning a bathroom, honey. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's really all we are. We're just people just, you know, 
hmm. grinding and you know doing our thing that's what i do yeah but it was it was um it was cute and kind of sweet for her to like kind of say so because other people in her chat were like who's that right <laughs> yeah. what she's talking about but well, it's, uh, yeah. it's fun it's very fun and i love getting to know a lot of the people they're good people yeah yeah, we've, we've truly been surrounded not only just, you know, by the family around us, but also the the, uh, the adoptive family that we have. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's just, uh, as, as, as it's been said before, is that, you know, we attract like-minded people, you know, Correct. and it's just, we just, we love that you guys are here. Um, but as always, uh, Mom, is there anything that you would like to tell uh, the CaveCast audience? Any, is there anything you want to tell them before we sign off until next week? Well, the CaveCast is hot. This is great <laughs> in here. And uh, Haley. <laughs> I'm getting my Fiji on. So, um, and yeah, just remember, have plan B, have your own wheels. Hmm. Well said. Yeah. Hmm. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, we will see you next week. Adios.